Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling, presented by the Idiot Radio Network, offering a weekly look into the world of professional wrestling with guest interviews, news, results, and much more. Now here's your host, Stephon Devereaux. Stephon Devereaux, Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling, here on Angry Kids 24-7. Ah, radio. <laughs> Man, five minutes before we go on air. Five minutes. We have a power outage in the studio. Now, luckily, it came back on. So, I'm hoping that we can last through this episode without another uh, incident like we had last week because this just been... The weather has been so bad the past couple of weekends here in Pittsburgh, and it's whew. But anyway, we're going to get through it. We're going to get through it, just like the WWE was able to get through this. Man, I just want to keep – I want to call it rock after rock after brick after brick, boulder after boulder. That's coming from these wrestling fans today because it is bad. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Look, people. I know AEW is your is your favorite right now. I get that. But just relax, man. Relax. Why do every time? I, I just don't get it. I go on Twitter, I go on Facebook, I go on YouTube. This is nothing but AEW, this, AEW, that. And it's just from a small group of people. It's not from, like, the whole world. It's a small group of people. It's a small group of wrestling fans who are pushing this. Now, look, I get it. I'm excited, too. But, man, by the time y'all get done talking about AEW, no one outside of your little group of friends and fans that are AEW supporters, you got – no one else is going to want to hear anything about it anymore because they're tired of it. They're tired of it. I've already said – look. Relax. Relax. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. Oh, man. Trust me. I get it. I get it. One of the reasons why that you're upset is because, because you're very tired of some of these uh, wrestlers that the WWE is putting in front of you. Some of these superstars. I get it. I'm upset, too, sometimes. There's nothing I can do. One of them I'm upset with, I'm going to start off. Is Becky Lynch. Are you tired of Becky Lynch? Because I am. I'm tired of Becky Lynch. I am tired of Becky Lynch. There I said it. This is why people like, let's see, Brock Lesnar draw ratings? Because at least, besides the name, but there's just a mystique behind Brock Lesnar. He's a badass who kicks ass everywhere he goes. Becky Lynch could have the same. I think they let her talk way too much. Instead of her just going out there and being a badass who can whoop ass, no, she still acts like she's trying to prove herself. What are you? There's nothing to prove. That's what I see in Becky Lynch, and it makes no sense to me why they continuously book her like this. Now I could be wrong, but this is what's making me tired of this woman. Now the accent, I don't mind an accent. I think it's actually sexy on it. It adds. But if she's talking less, instead of trying to be a badass, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It will open the gates to other organiz I mean, excuse me, other media outlets. They're going to want to sit back, and they want to know about her. So she'll be doing more interviews. I mean, that's the type of superstar I see her. S in the WWE. The quiet one. And then another thing that's making it making me like then let it leak about the relationship between her and Seth Rollins. That doesn't help. 
that does not help. Because we see the two superstars with the titles on top right now. You can honestly say that these are the two superstars that the WWE is going to continuously push right now. Look where the ratings are at. And to make matters worse, now they're a couple. They're a couple. I don't mind Becky Lynch and doses. Look, it's no different than Brock Lesnar. I don't mind Brock Lesnar and doses. I don't mind Paul Heyman. And the way they book Brock Lesnar, fans hate it. But the ratings say differently. It's only a small group of internet wrestling fans who hate this Brock Lesnar thing. And they're the most vocal. But the ratings say a different story every time. Becky Lynch can be that. She can be that type of superstar for the WWE. You're telling me she can't? That's the way she should be booked. Good in-ring worker. She's decent on the microphone. But it seems like the story she's trying to tell is that she's trying to prove herself as the man. Come on, man. We don't need that. People should be trying to prove their self to fight her, to get a chance at her. Remember how they booked Ronda Rousey? When they booked, when they booked Ronda that way, I said, okay, at least they understand what they're still, what they're still doing. Because sometimes you've got to wonder about the WWE and the creative decisions they make. I won't get into John Moxley's statement this past week on the Jericho show. I won't do that. I could. Maybe. Uh, who cares? Anyway. But everybody wanted to fight to get an opportunity to get to Ronda Rousey. That's Becky Lynch. She just beat Ronda Rousey, and she beat Charlotte Flair. One match. And she's still acting like she has to prove herself? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But the ratings are telling me different. I'm looking at these ratings, and I'm like, you know, her segments, because you can go and still check the ratings segment by segment. Her segments are not drawing. They're okay. They're okay. Now, that's going to bring me to my next question. Because a lot of people are out here running their mouth saying, oh, well, Mr. McMahon needs to step down and let Triple H take over. Well, my next question, and we're going to ask that question after this. We're going to answer that question after this segment or this commercial. I'll ask it before the segment's over. (laughs) Oh, man, what are those days? But that question is, Can Triple H really save the WWE? Hmm. I'll answer that after this break. You're listening to the Dev Real Committee of Pro Wrestling. You're on Angry Cast 24-7 Radio. We'll be right back after this break. You're listening to Angry Cast 24-7 Radio. Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. How to text a guy to keep him interested? Hmm, it's a question many women ask daily. Well, Amy North believes she has found the answer with how to text a guy to keep him interested. It's a new course that she has put together and it's helping ladies all across the world. You can go to how to text a guy to keep him interested dot weebly dot com for more information. Amy says she has the answer, so find out there at how to text a guy to keep him interested dot weebly dot com. Recovery from mental and substance use disorders is real. You can recover. It's possible. It happens every day. Never give up on yourself. Discover hope and help. I thought I was too far gone. I wasn't. Join the voices for recovery. The world is a beautiful place again. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral for mental and substance use disorders for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. 
I'm getting older. Do I need to worry about falling? Yes, you do. Each year, one in four people 65 and older will experience a fall, and many will be serious. The majority of falls happen at home, so remove things that could make you trip and install handrails to keep you steady. To learn more about the steps you can take to help prevent a fall, please talk to your doctor. You can also visit aarpfoundation.org or medicaremadeclear.com slash falls. This message was brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. You're listening to Angry Kids 24 7 Radio. Stephon Devereaux, Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling here on Angry Kids 24 7 Radio. I want to say shout out, shout out. Yeah, send a shout out to my Angry Kids 24 7 Radio family. Angry Kids 24 7. So we do, you know what I'm saying? We have fun. We get angry. We make money all day long. Every day. So I'm talking about 24 7. So I want to thank those guys for their support and how much, you know, they show love to me and the rest of the family members and so forth. Don't forget, we got that new Karma. Man, <laughs> that new Karma CD, yo. You know what I'm saying? Well, they're not called CDs anymore, but that new Karma album, you know what I'm saying? Man, she's killing it. You know what I'm saying? We got an interview with her up on Angry Kids 24-7 radio stream. Um, go check that out. You can uh, reach us through her various outlets. You know, Google us. That's what I tell people. Just Google it, Angry Kids 24-7 radio, or one of the links in the description. But anyway, let's move along. Move on. What people want to know. They want to talk about. They want to know my answer. Will Triple H save the WWE? And my answer, I'm going to just come out and say no. Nope. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. And I'm saying it a lot. I keep saying it. Look, I respect Triple H for his years in the ring. I respect Triple H for what he was able to do with NXT. But let me be real with you guys, okay? I'm going to sit back. I'm going to be real with my peoples for a minute. Take a deep breath. I'm going to enjoy this for a minute. I like Triple H. Like I said, I respect Triple H. But Triple H to me is not the one. Here's why. Yes, NXT is very successful. But NXT is really only successful in, for, you know, a decent, uh, I'm going to say about 25% of the average wrestling fan. All, you know, I'm a, every wrestling fan that's out there, every wrestling fan that's out there, about 25% of those wrestling fans actually care and watch NXT on a regular basis. So that's 75% of the fan base. Now, well, did I say WWE? And I, I, I know I could be really, really, huh, and I know I'm probably wrong on those numbers, but I'm just going to go off of my, uh, the eyeball test, especially when these guys come up to the WWE. Okay, so let's name some of the stars that's come up to the from NXT, you know, superstars in NXT that's come up to the WWE roster. Now, this is Triple H's baby, mind you. Okay. Now, we've had some decent success eh, stories, I guess. Decent success stories. But, let's be real. None of them's drawing money. Who's drawing ratings, of, you know, which equals money? Who's bringing in, who's selling tickets, which equals money? Merchandise, that equals money. Who? We've had some decent TV characters. The storylines, yes, they have been on top, you know, in the WWE. Which brings me to another point of why I don't think Triple H would, if he took over, anything would change. Because guess what? He's not head of creative uh, for the WWE. People can say and yell Vince McMahon all they want, but we, you know, we also know that Stephanie McMahon's involved. So you're going to tell me if he hasn't been able to convince his wife to fight for that cause, his cause, then, and maybe, and if he has, 
And if she's actually out there yelling and screaming for his guys, guess what? Look at what these guys, I mean, let's be real. These guys are not making money for the company. Like serious money. The type of, and, and I'm tired of hearing that, well, once they get to a certain, spot, a certain point, the WWE stops them from becoming superstars. Okay, let's get past that. Because the guys that they've had and they've been pushing in those serious spots have been NXT guys. It's not like they're holding them back for Goldberg still. Yeah, Brock shows up every uh, every now and then. Yeah, he may have been a champion, but guess what? Those other guys are supposed to carry the show. Those other wrestlers are supposed to carry the show, carry the Raws, the SmackDowns, the house shows, the pay-per-views when Brock's not around. And they keep going, well, the championship is was around Brock's waist. It's not around his waist now, and, and guess what? The ratings dipped. You know when they came back up? Well, people knew Brock Lesnar was going to be on Raw. So I'm confused. These are Triple H's guys, his projects. NXT is his project. NXT is his baby. This thing was supposed to produce one, yeah, one job. It wasn't to become the third brand. Excellent pay-per-view, by the way, last night. Just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> but NXT wasn't supposed to be the, the third brand. It was supposed to be the developmental territory for the WWE. That's it. But it exploded. People enjoyed it. Guess what? Now it's the third brand. They should just keep it as the third brand. Stop bringing guys up because once they come to the main roster, guess what? Look what happens. They're not drawing up. They're not drawing money. If you can't give me a superstar that's not just a niche superstar for a little, a smaller brand, you got to give me a superstar that's coming up to the roster and that's going to turn heads. The only guy that, I've, that I see doing that out of this, this latest crop of guys that came up, Alistair. It's the only one I, I'm dead serious. He's it. That kid got it. I like that dude. Ricochet, come on, man. Same thing, small guy syndrome, and I'm tired of it. These guys are stuck in that. Why can't you continuously find bigger guys to get them and work them into a position to where they can get onto the roster and actually make the money? The wrestling fans, I'm tired. I, I know you have to be tired of seeing the flippy stuff. You got to be. It's ruined the business. People just get mad for me, at me for saying it, but guess what? It has ruined the business. And Triple H want to continuously let these guys come up? It will never happen. They will never draw enough money to turn this thing around. And guess what? The same thing's going to happen with AEW. Ring of Honor. You know the company I do like? MLW. I see progress. Now, I'm not saying they're going to beat the WWE one day, but at least they get it. Pro wrestling will forever be a big man's game to the casual viewer. And until, as long as you continuously sell these smaller guys and Triple H right now, he's, going to, he's, the, he's the guy from the head of NXT, and he's, these are the guys that they're building. And we'll talk about a smaller guy in this business that I actually like. But he should really only be one of three, not one of 20. We'll talk about him in the next segment. But Triple H, in my opinion, he can't sell this. He can't, he can't make this thing work. Can't. He would never do this. He will never turn the WWE into what people expect it to be. He can't do it. Let him stay with his little niche thing. That's cool. NXT is a great show. That's what it's supposed to be. But when people say that if Triple H took over, I expect him to do I expect him to do it to the WWE what he did to NXT. It would never work. The wrestling bit, look, 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 
They can do all of the flips that they want. But if they ain't out there beating ass, it will never work. People forget that. The name of the game is wrestling, fighting. Not who could do the best hurricanrana or who could do the best 450 off the top. Come on, man. That crap is not believable. But y'all get mad at me, though, for saying it. Look at the ratings. Austin didn't do no flip. Austin drew. The Rock didn't do no flips. The Rock drew. Triple H didn't do no flips. He drew somewhat. The guy who did flips was Shawn Michaels. And, you know, guess what? Hey, let's be real. Let's be real. Shawn Michaels was the champion during one of the worst periods in the WWE's financial history. He was believable. But he didn't bring in the casual viewers. He never did. People, they really believe Shawn Michaels is like this, this great legend who brought in all these casual viewers. And so, no, he didn't. But the thing that made Shawn Michaels special was he was one out of three who was doing stuff like that instead of one out of 20. You're listening to the Devereux Comedio Pro Wrestling here on Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to celebrate the crowning of a new champion. And this is a guy that I know, I know, he's definitely a one out of three guy. You know, when I talk about the smaller guys in the business, he would actually make money if they give him that shot. You're listening to the Devereux Committee, Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. Be right back after this. You're listening to Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. Kids 24-7 How to text a guy to keep him interested? Hmm, it's a question many women ask daily. Well, Amy North believes she has found the answer with How to Text a Guy to Keep Him Interested. It's a new course that she has put together, and it's helping ladies all across the world. You can go to How to Text a Guy to Keep Him Interested. Weebly.com for more information. Amy says she has the answer, so find out there. A how to text a guy to keep him interested. Weebly.com. Recovery from mental and substance use disorders is real. You can recover. It's possible. It happens every day. Never give up on yourself. Discover hope and help. I thought I was too far gone. I wasn't. Join the voices for recovery. The world is a beautiful place again. For 24 hour free and confidential information and treatment referral for mental and substance use disorders for you or someone you know. Call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. I'm getting older. Do I need to worry about falling? Yes, you do. Each year, one in four people 65 and older will experience a fall, and many will be serious. The majority of falls happen at home, so remove things that could make you trip and install handrails to keep you steady. To learn more about the steps you can take to help prevent a fall, please talk to your doctor. You can also visit aarpfoundation.org or medicaremadeclear.com slash falls. This message was brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. You're listening to Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. Step on Devereaux. Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling, Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. All right. Congratulations to an awesome individual, one of my favorite wrestlers that I've ever had a chance to meet in this business ever, and that's Adam Cole, baby. Congratulations to the new NXT champion, Adam Cole, who defeated Johnny Gargano, another great guy, by the way, another great guy. I remember Johnny Gargano uh, when he was doing the Indies, just like I remember Adam, too. But both of these guys, they put on a five-star match at NXT TakeOver last night. And my man, Adam Cole, baby. Yeah. Look, to me, Adam Cole can be a bona fide superstar once he gets to the main roster. Now, he's in a class with one of 20, but he has the potential to be that one of three. And, okay, it also reminds me of uh, 
when I was when I think of Enzo Amore. He's not the greatest wrestler, people say, but I like him. I think Enzo Amore is very entertaining. He he brings something to television every time. When you see okay, when you see a guy like that come on TV and he talks like that, boom, you know he he got star qualities. Same thing goes with Adam Cole. Now Adam Cole's a much better wrestler. I will say that most definitely. But microphone wise, I won't say he's better than Enzo, but he has his niche. He has his own flavor that you know it gets over, and I think it it will translate to. Casual fans. Because that's what this thing is all about. Drawing fans. As many as possible. Not just saying, well, you know, we want to make sure that we take care of our true pro wrestling fans. Can you imagine if football and baseball decided to go that route? Especially baseball. You know, they're trying to break the rules a little bit. You know, those traditional rules that they had in baseball. They're trying to break them a little bit. But can you imagine if football stayed there? Man, dude. Now, yeah, I know sometimes they they go overboard with the new rules and everything, but but I like Adam Cole. I think Adam Cole is the guy that they bring him up to the main roster. He would actually make money. He got the slogan, you know, which is sick. Number one, he got he got the slogan. He has he has a look of being. Uh, I want to say an a-hole. <laughs> so, of course, he's going to be the guy that everybody wants to beat up. Just like Enzo. He was the guy everybody wanted to beat up. Now, will they give him that opportunity? I believe they will. But I would not, hey, I'm going to say it here. This guy got star potential, super star potential all over him once he makes it to the main roster. Let him get that microphone. Let him do his thing. Man. And there's only a few of those guys, especially small guys. There's only a few who can do that. I mentioned two already. Enzo and his, you know, and Adam. You give me one more, you can leave those in the comments or you can email me. Let me know what you think. People can say whatever they want, but you got to be a special small guy to be able to draw money in professional wrestling. Serious money. Rey Mysterio. I still believe to this day, once Rey, once Rey Mysterio hit uh, North America, or excuse me, the, the United States, because he was a, su- a huge superstar in Mexico. And I remember the mag- when we used to have magazines, wrestling magazines, back in the day. And that's all they talked about was Rey Mysterio. But guess what? There was only one Rey Mysterio, you know. Now, we knew there was other luchadors and so forth, but Rey Mysterio was the king. And we knew that. Once Rey Mysterio hit WCW's TV, oh, my goodness, it was over. But then it kind of got watered down when they started bringing in 30 other guys that were doing somewhat what he was doing. He just made it look special because he was tiny. But then when they started bringing in other tiny guys up who was doing the same thing he was doing, Eh, look like it wasn't working out too well. <laughs> eh. But, hey, it's my opinion, but I think my opinion is backed by facts. So look it up. But I want to thank you all for joining me. Again, congratulations to my man, Adam Cole. But um, I do want to thank you all for joining me this week. And, uh, man, we got the super showdown in Saudi Arabia happening in. So I'll probably have, I was thinking about doing a show uh, before it, or maybe after, who knows. If not, you'll see me or hear me next Sunday here on Angry Kids 24-7 Radio, the Devereux Committee of Pro Wrestling. I want to thank you again for joining us, and we are out. You're listening to Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. Kids 24-7 How to text a guy to keep him interested? Hmm, it's a question many women ask daily. 
Well, Amy North believes she has found the answer with how to text a guy to keep him interested. It's a new course that she has put together and it's helping ladies all across the world. You can go to how to text a guy to keep him interested dot for more information. Amy says she has the answer, so find out there at how to text a guy to keep him interested dot Recovery. 